So I wanted to share another trip report that happened around six years ago, and this was back in my episode thing. You, you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, I've, I've mentioned it enough. You guys can just look back in the past videos to get more information about that. So if I sound a little weird in some of these reports, that's probably why. So just giving you guys a heads up for that. But this one was really interesting because it was the first time that I was actually experiencing just how intense pharmawaska can be or oral DMT. And uh, visually speaking, these visual experiences were almost like being catapulted out of a cannon over the whole universe. And it's, it's almost, it's, it's a very grandiose experience that you can't really quite put into words, but I've tried to write it down anytime that I had these experiences to try to give more of a impression of what's going on. And it's interesting to read the archetypes that I was experiencing and uh, specifically game archetypes uh, as in checkerboard stuff and also clown related stuff. Uh, this stuff, this, these experiences really sort of paved the way for me to really understand what all of these archetypes are are basically trying to communicate or trying to compile into. And it created a, a complete network of ideas and concepts based on what I was seeing. And it, to me, it was really fascinating that I was able to actually make note of all of these things. So uh, I'm going to get into basically the dose and I'll just read from what I was experiencing, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So, I it says here, I just took four grams of Syrian rue and then 100 milligrams, 180 milligrams of DMT free base 30 minutes after. Wish me luck, gonna be fun. And then they wish me luck. And then I report in at 11.23, definitely feeling body load, hopefully explodes into something good. 11.34, Feeling psychedelic body load, bright, brightening of faint patterns in vision and perception change. And then someone told me to go to bed, basically. But I always do that. I always go into silent darkness. And then I actually wrote down the trip. So this is what I wrote. Yeah, I went, I went to my bed and laid down, and then I went to intense places. Literally, I was watching the Big Bang happen before my eyes. When I closed my eyes... I focused my attention to the side corner of my blank vision and saw what looked like a doorway from some next dimension linked to this one. And there was these strange humanoid entities that kind of looked like chess pieces. And I was seeing massive pawn bishops. And this vision I actually remember. This was very uh, amazing. It was, it was almost as if a door opened and then these big, huge pawn bishops came out of it. And they were, it was a, a really... This actually really jogged my memory of that experience when I started reading it. So it's it's interesting that I that I had was able to write down all these things so I don't just forget it. It's cool because I have everything written down so I don't I don't forget my trips because I can just go back to the logs and then rejog my memory. It's like, "Oh yeah, I remember that experience." So then it says, "This doorway to the other dimension felt like it merged into this reality." And things got weird when Th uh, things got weird. I was getting paranoid that everyone in my house was awake because I thought I was hearing footsteps at 5 a.m. I was scared to look because for some reason I thought my dad was dressed as a in a clown suit and was waiting for me to check out the noise and then would jump out of nowhere and try to scare me. And this was me just believing that I was going to see a clown for some reason. I guess I was accustomed to the archetype of the clowns being associated with it. I didn't actually see a clown, but I was just anticipating that I would. And then this made absolutely no sense because no one in my house liked to dress up like a clown and try to scare someone at night. I had a feeling that almost everyone in the world is contact with beings in these alternate states and purposely messing with my head as a joke for me to find out something. Uh, I seriously thought I was going to see entities on this wavelength of existence and beam into my room. There definitely was interdimensional aliens. I was seeing cities. This was an intense pharmawaska trip, at time a tad bit overwhelming even for my standards, but nothing unmanageable. I can definitely see that experience scaring someone uh, who's not as well versed in these states. I've had, I haven't had a pharmawaska trip like that in time or in general. Very pleased. 
Definitely more intense than a heavy 4-ACO DMT trip, and maybe on par with 4-ACO uh, mixed with a MAOI, which was unexpected. And the Syrian Rue worked flawlessly this time. I just took more and ground it uh, into a powder. Thanks for all the good vibes sent my way. And uh, then I add more. I could barely see things when I went into the washroom. Everything was morphing heavily. It was like my body was made out of liquid jello. And when I was lying in my bed, I felt as if I could stretch my nostril hole on my nose over my head. And I was trying to, and at one point I thought I was getting close. I was experiencing cymatics at play. My body became what seemed like just energy. I felt like Gengar from Pokemon. Everything took a higher vibrational form and a higher complexity in its representation. And that's basically me referencing cymatics. So if you guys don't know what cymatics is, it's basically when they buzz a frequency on a plate with sand and then the, it, uh, it increases, the sand creates uh, complex geometric patterns and it increases in complexity the more you increase the frequency. And that's what I thought that the DMT experience kind of was it was kind of because anytime that i would hear a higher vibration the or a, a higher frequency vibration the visions would get more intense and more intricate so i thought it was a cymatic relationship and then i write even more detail about it uh, someone asked me how long it was and i said it was around eight hours i think i haven't done i uh, ayahuasca just pharmawasca i thought of drinking my, the thought of drinking mimosa bark makes me gag but I'd say it's like an extremely intense mushroom trip, like 10 grams of mushrooms or more. At the beginning, I completely lost my body. So back to the trip. My consciousness was like a pinball that, was, that went down some sort of slot and was lodged into pure everythingness, a vast space that encompassed all of possible existence. I was floating on a cloud of endless possibilities. So my whole head was some sort of super server that hold all of reality. So everyone is a program contained within a virtual server in my mind and held up and projected, including the experience that is myself and my awareness. This is a virtual ego of something that happened long ago and will continue to happen until the rest of the time, which is endless. So these trips were actually starting to cause a bit of a solipsism kind of thing. And, and that was basically what my psychosis was kind of doing as well as I was getting kind of solipsist in, in my perspective. And I was thinking that everyone was just a projection of my uh, subconscious. And oddly enough, I've sort of been trying to subscribe back to that uh, state of mind, but only for the utility of it, because I've experienced a lot of things that kind of make me very depressed, and it's easier for me to believe that the, the things that made me depressed with certain interactions are basically just my own consciousness, so there, it, I, I don't have to take anything personal, it's just my own consciousness basically self-harming myself. And uh, I know that that's probably not right, but it's comfortable to, to try to think that, just because I at the moment I don't really have any other any other way of accepting the things that happened to me in, in, in the recent past. So uh, I definitely somehow find utility in, in those beliefs. But uh, anyways, back to that experience. It's, it's very interesting, my perspective on what I was experiencing because it, it, um, it was showing me really, really intense experiences that I was actually able to stand back then. Right now, I would feel as if I would not be able to handle those kinds of in intense experiences because I remember now that I re now that I read it, I remember exactly how it felt being shot out of a cannonball over the whole universe, and it was a it was an extremely intense visual experience, and and uh, actually feeling as if you're flying and and not just stationary. It's it's sort of beyond anything that I think that I could put myself through now, but uh, I'm just, I'm glad that I was able to have a lot of these experiences. I even have more, so I can definitely share more about my experiences, but this one was definitely when it started to get extremely powerful because these were like the really high doses that I was taking to really get into the crazy dimensions and, and uh, crazy out-of-body experiences. And after these experiences, then it started to take a turn where it was actually uh, feeling as if my, my life was in the balance and, and uh, starting to get very heavy for me. So that's actually going to be the next trip report that I share about my Farmawaska experience, but uh, I'll leave that for another video because I don't want this one to run too long. But um, 
yeah, this, this was the last trip that I had that I could actually handle before it was starting to feel like I was actually dying and, and uh, sacrificing myself somehow. And, and uh, it's getting to the point where I'm, I'm running out of the energy to do that now, as I've mentioned in, in the past. So um, yeah, hopefully you guys thought that was an interesting trip report and I will definitely share the next one in the next video. So peace out.